All right, folks. From the land of the midnight sun here in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, Canada, all the way down to Connecticut for my next guest, I have legendary living color bass player Doug Wimbush on the line with me today. Doug, how are you doing, sir? I am mellow as a cello, my friend. <laughs> all is good in lovely Connecticut. Right, right, right on. It, it's actually, uh, you know, it's such a Canadian thing to talk about the weather. But, I mean, we, we're actually getting really nice weather. It's like a high of 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, but but I would imagine it's wow. probably going to be a little warmer in Connecticut today, eh? Yeah, it's been, you know, we've been blessed. We got we have some, you know, we've been good weather. And, uh, you know, uh, it's been humid. And uh, th- thunderstorms are lurking in the area. I can look outside my window and, and see those clouds. But, uh yeah, you know, uh, there's uh, there's activity on the horizon, put it like that. <laughs> well, now, speaking of activity, though, you and uh, your band, Living Color, you are getting to ready to release uh, an album that's been a, 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 while, a while in the works, uh, Shade, releasing uh, finally September 8th via Megaforce Records. Now, I know, I, I mentioned to you before we went on air that Corey and I were literally doing an interview about this record two years ago. So, I mean, what what took the record so long to uh, come out? You know, basically, it's just life. You know, we started making this record like almost five years ago. It mm. was kind of sparked by us being a part of the Robert Johnson 100th birthday celebration at the Apollo Theater. That's right. It gave us, uh, you know, a jolt of inspiration when we performed Preaching Blues in a, at, a, um, at the performance. And, you know, we're with some of our peers also playing at this performance and packed room and uh, we got a standing ovation. It kind of just came together. It wasn't something that we had a chance to uh, rehearse. It was like, okay, let's get, you know, we're in the dressing room at the Apollo. Um, what song are we going <laughs> to, we knew we were going to do Preaching Blues. And it just started to, it just, you know, we started to put some ideas together and then we rehearsed it once and off we went. And when we did the gig, it was one of those like spiritual moments, kind of like that led us to say, you know what, maybe it would be good if we start to engage in a conversation about how we actually interpret the blues and how we see the the, the musical tree of how, it, how the blues DNA has been able to um, morph and become a part of a lot of different genres of music o- over time. So that's where it kind of started. To be able to get more clear as far as the timetable, you know, we started off with doing, you know, I have a friend of mine, Andre Betts, who became the producer of this project. That's right, yeah. And um, I guess a lot of it was just because we're starting to, we're doing something in, with a slightly uh, different from how we've approached making other records prior. Yeah. But anyway, Dre's approach was great. And he kind of he challenged us to be able to be open in doing it. So it took a moment for everybody to, number one, digest that process. Um, and, and also, um, you know, life. You know, guys have kids and families. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, um, so the idea of us being able to, you know, work like the way we did back when we were in our, you know, early, early in our careers, you know, when you're just like, all right, we're all together now. Here we are. Let's get in the van and drive across country and put all our money together and eat Slim Jims and stuff like that. We, time has moved on and, you know, yeah. we had to deal with the reality of our time management. So there were some starts and stops based on, you know, everybody's quite active you know i'm out touring and doing stuff in, in with different artists as is will as is Corey, as mm-hmm. is vernon so i guess the real issue was just time management and scheduling that, that's right that's right well you know I'm, I'm glad you mentioned passages of time there because i mean if, if my information is correct you've been with living color official an official capacity for 25 years now i, I mean i know you and, and vernon though you you go way back i think as far back as 1981 um you know so so that that that's pretty amazing that living color is still out and 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 doing their thing and you're still out doing your thing with them as well on on top of having time to to do your own stuff as well well you know that's you know that's uh that's a blessing man. not to get too spiritual but you know again i have known vernon from for long you know we've been friends for many many years and from our new york days and you know, when I was in the band Tackhead, he's a massive fan yeah. um, of the band. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I moved over to England and I would, you know, and he was he's born in England. So I think there was like a mirror inversion going on, uh, you know, um, 
You know, Vernon always had, you know, obviously his roots, he has roots in the UK. And I've been living, I've been living in the UK on and off for the last, since 1984. Mm-hmm. I, you know, um, the frequency that you, that you get when you're in the UK working, especially working with the, with, with the folks that, I, that I'm connected with, Adrian Sherwood on You Sound Records. And, you know, we've worked, we've been blessed to, to work with so many different artists over there. You know, over, when, when I went to the UK, I worked with Jeff Beck, and, you know, uh, Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones, Annie Lennox, Seal, Trevor Horn, uh, all the different studios that were there at the time. Um, I was engaged with a lot of, most of the studios I was engaged with, a lot of residential studios as well, working with, um, uh, you know, also artists, you know, Daniel Miller and Ute Records, uh, uh, Depeche Mode. So I was, I was fortunate to be, you know, coming off the heels of all the Sugar Hill stuff that I did, gave, gave you know, the English folks were taking a shining to a lot of the stuff that myself yeah. Yeah. and Skip McDonald and Keith LeBlanc did. And Vernon was engaged in that. He was, he was kind of like aware of what was going on. And, and uh, so our history goes, uh, goes back. He, Vernon used to come to our loft on 14th Street and just hang out and <laughs> we'd talk music. Yeah. And we, uh, the, even before when he was thinking about putting Living Color together. Because Living Color has been a band that has morphed over the years as well. You know, the, you know um, there, was, there were different folks that were involved in when it was Vernon Reed's Living Color. So he'd come and sit down on 14th Street and hang out with us, and, and we'd chop things up, you know, um, from time. And then fast forward, next thing you know, I'm, you know, um, I'm working with Mick Jagger and, uh, m- you know, Living Colors, making some splash in, the, in New York. And Mick comes to me, he's like, Dougie, I, I heard about this band Living Color. You know, you, you know what do you think? I said, yo, they're my mates, man. You know, he said, yeah. Matter of fact, um, you're going to be playing at CBGB's, you know. So I said, go check them out. So I sent Jeff Beck and Mick Jagger to go see Living Color at CBGB's. And uh, yeah. from that, that, that was like a, you know, I was, I was, even though I wasn't in the band, I was influential in being able to make, connecting the dots for the band. And, you know, and, and encouraging um, Mick that, you know, that, you know, yeah, man, Vern is my boy, you know, and, and, and supporting him. You know, I had my own band. You know, I could have been like, no, forget him, man. You know, check this out. <laughs> But I'm like, no, man. If you know, you look after your friends. That's yeah. what that's what real friends do. So um, me and Vernon go back for for a period of time. I got involved. Um, I was in the UK. Um, they decided to make a bass change, and uh, I get a you know about you know a few months before they were going to make the bass change, or maybe they were thinking about it. I was in Los Angeles producing a uh, hip hop band called the Booyah tribe. Godfather, the guitar, uh, the, the leader of, of the Booyah tribe was, he was like, man, I'm, a, I'm digging. He loved my, he loved Packhead. He liked the song we had stealing in the name of the Lord. Uh-huh. And then he also was like, man, I love that band living color as well. I said, let's, let's, uh, I said, yeah, well, let's go check them out. So we, some of the guys they, they went to go see him and at universal, uh, 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 amphitheater. And, uh, and they were like, yeah, man, you know, these guys are great, man. It'd be great if we can get, some of them on the record. So I reached out to Vernon and got Vernon to come in and play some guitar. Um, and then Corey, you want, you know, let's get Corey to sing on some songs. So they really enjoyed that. And, you know, and, and as it unfolded, the record never came out. Uh, but, you know, um, due to, let's just say they were engaged in some, some things that kind of like, you know, I guess the record label saw, you know, some issues and, but, you know, it was a great record. It kind of, uh, Kind of like like a lot of bands, you do records and nothing ever happens sometimes based yeah. on whatever budget or whatever. But that was you know I got Will Calhoun came to the studio and I was trying to get him on drums but it didn't didn't happen. And but he remembered me offering it up and next thing you know I'm four months later I go to England, I'm in the UK and I get a call from Will saying hey man we're thinking about making a bass change I really like for you know you to to actually do it I really like playing with you. Yeah. Out of fairness, we're going to have auditions. So, um, you know, I kind of, okay. So I kind of, uh, said, would you mind coming on over and doing something? I said, oh, okay, no problem. So I kind of, uh, I had some other stuff I was already doing in, in the UK. I had about 72 hours to get in and get out. I was doing some work with Trevor Horn and Seal at the time. So I, uh, so I didn't have much time, but I said, I'll fly over real quick, do the audition. And, um, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm pretty uh, good at picking things up quite quick. Um, you know, just years of, you know, being in these kind of situations and uh, came in, was prepared. Didn't have much time to pre- prepare, but I was. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one thing led to another, did it, I got the, you know, and the rest is history. You mentioned now that you 
you know, way back played with Sugar Hill Studios and your your bass is on, you know, tracks like Grandmaster Flash's The Message and White Lines. Now, you know, fast forwarding it up to Shade and doing Who Shot You, it seems like the message of, of The Message is pretty much... Uh, you know, remain consistent. <clears throat> as, as a matter of fact, you know, th- things have obviously, due to the political climate in the United States, gotten progressively worse since you released that track. Am I right? Right now, you know, living color and in the times that we're living in right now, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, I- I'm thankful that we still have our voice and we're not just kowtowing to, you know, coming out here to try to make a buck. Yeah. You know, we, we're, um, we, of course, we have to survive, but we're also doing things in a, in a uh, with a with a with a message that's coming from that's coming from the heart, you know. And 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 when we and we honor and look forward to hearing other like-minded folks that have these messages as well, and also uh, um, encourage the next generation to you know stand up, have a voice, but do it with respect, you know. Look after you look after this planet and other and the folks that are. That, that we we live that we live here that we share this planet with we all have we all might have our differences but you know it it, it, it shouldn't be taken out by taking the lives away from other people to prove your point yeah. you know so we're part of this system and um, and hopefully you know you know there's like-minded folks that can collectively get together from both sides of the aisle as they'll say you know people that have differences let's get people together and try and you know, let's try to work them out. Let's take it to the stage. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's bring, let's, 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 let's do it in a, in a way that can, that can be uh, good for the next generation. Look, man, when you're like two, three, four years old, you're, you're fine, man. Once you get to be five, you start to get programmed. By the time you're six, seven or eight, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you can, if you can, if you can find a way how to, to keep that sensibility of pureness, like, like what, you know, like, like you see little children have, you know, and uh, before they get programmed, you know, by <laughs> television, family, and all these other, stay away from that. This person's no good for you. We're better than that person. This person, you know, all these things are what gets put into our head before you know it. You know, you um, here you are. You know, so hopefully we can, we can, you know, um, we can find a way to just help everybody on this planet survive. Survive, you know, uh, you know, help. And that to me comes from education. That to me comes from, you know, being able to make sure that everybody can get a good education. Everybody understands what's happening and, and you know, and um, we can have a global uh, way to, to look after uh, everybody instead of just, oh, well, look after my friends, screw everybody else kind of vibe. So yeah. a lot of these things reflect on why we have, why a song like The Message was done, because it documented the time of what was going on in the 80s. You know, from my friends from Grandmaster Flash growing up in the South Bronx. And then here, fast forward, Living Color covers a song, Who Shot You, which was, you know, basically beef between Biggie and Tupac that kind of started, that was the record that started to make things go public, you know. And uh, and at the end of the day, what happened? Both of them got killed, yeah. you know. And um, we're by no means trying to cash in on that, by no means. We're just trying to make a connection of how, the, the, that those things play out. Yeah, well, there's that R and B kind of sound too, and I think you guys expertly captured that influence. You know, not to focus on covers, but I mean, you guys did a phenomenal cover of Inner City Blues, where you somehow, you know, tipped the hat to Marvin Gaye's original uh, con- concept of the song, of course. But then, you know, you also make it sound, you know, like like a living color song at the same time. And and I think over the years, that's what you guys have have been very good at is, is taking and, and borrowing from the blues and hip hop and R and B and then applying that to the living color sound. But then you still sound like a hard rock act at the same time. It's crazy, isn't it? You know, a lot of things with this band, it happens just on the spot at the moment. Here's how that all came to be. While you're talking about that great song, I was MDing a, uh, a show, uh, a themed kind of like show that was themed off of a, Marvin Gaye, uh, and we were doing a tri- Marvin Gaye tribute show. And Corey was, Corey was, a, uh, you know, I was MD in it, bunch of some other bunch of singers. Corey was one of the singers. We did that song, and it, and it was cool. Fast forward, Living Colors playing a pre-Afropunk party in 
uh, Washington, D.C., which is the home of Marvin Gaye. So <clears throat> I kind of, um, you know, I had maybe like a, you know, okay, um, we're doing one song, Bye, um, and, and usually I do a bass solo in it. And I said, you know what, let me, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do a long, you know, whatever, you know, minute solo. We got about 16 bars. So I said, you know what, I'm here in, Mar I'm, I'm here in, 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 um, in uh, Washington, D.C., you know, I'm going to play for my little 16 bar, whatever. I said, you know what? Let me just cut right to the chase and let me pay, uh, let me play the C, let me play the bass line in the city blues, you know, at that, that became part of like my little solo. And so when I was uh, kind of, you know, I played something that people kind of know, you know, then doing a solo that people don't even, what is he doing up there? So you got, you got about 16 bars to make a connection. And this comes from my old hip hop days, you know, just, you know, just find something that can connect with people. We're in, we're in entertaining mode right now. So I did the bass solo and it, and I just, all I was playing was inner city blues, just the, you know, just the bass line, but the people really dug it. I'm in DC went well. Um, and then the next day, Bird and everybody was kind of cool. So the next day, you know, Bird was like, why don't we, um, why don't, you know, Doug, how's that go? Let's work that song. Why don't we do, why don't we work the song into the set? So it became, it got inspired by me doing the bass, doing Inter City Blues at, in D.C. And then that morphed into like, man, everybody saw the, you know, the, the hype of how just that bass line, it's a very deep bass line, you know, the James Jameson at his best. Mm -hmm. And it captured that audience in Marvin Gaye's hometown. And then that morphed into like, let's do, and it's, let's work out in the city blues the next day at Soundcheck. So it just happened, you know? And that's what happens with Living Color. It's kind of like, you know, we're one of those bands where it's at that spirit of the moment where things happen. So fast forward, when we made Shade, you know, there was, you know, there was right down to the, to the, to the end, there was, there was, um, still trying to top a few things off. And I had suggested, I'm like, guys, you know, why don't we cut in the city blues? Why don't we make that? It was the last song that we cut on the record. So mm -hmm. why don't we, why don't we do a version of this? Just see what it sounds like. So we cut it. And, um, and it was, uh, we did it. We did our version and it was, and it was cool. It was cool. Right on, man. Well, the record is called shade and it's going to release September 8th via living colors label, mega force records. And, uh, uh, Doug, I, I'm really, I'm really glad we got to have this conversation today, man. You, you're, you're a very knowledgeable artist who has a, a long history in, in the business, and uh, you know, you're very introspective, which I, I really appreciate, and I'm sure my listeners will as well. Well, to all your good listeners out there, and and all the folks in Yellow Knife, we hope to one day be able to see you, and I, I'm giving you wireless hugs across <laughs> the internet and across the airways. But you know, please, all you good folks out there as you're listening to this radio program or this broadcast, please support the arts, support live music, support the next generation. You know what I mean? You know, support the local clubs that's trying to be able to have live music there. You know, help support to put a guitar in and, and, and an instrument in somebody's hands. Not, and, and, you know, and because uh, you make a difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And hopefully I, I get to, if, if, if you know, if you guys get out there, you know, can listen to this broadcast and listen to all the other great artists that are out there. Please support them. And, you know, it means the world to them. And Jack, thank you for doing this, you know, um, and uh, Jack from Jack Knight from Yellow Knight. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, thank right. you for doing this and from Living Color. We appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Yeah, no worries, man. Thanks a lot for your time.